to know, listen, listen. If a man abide not in me, is cast forth as a branch and is withered. If a man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch and is withered. Like, 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 is this the life that God died for? Is this the life that Christ died for? That, that I live a withered life? You, does this make sense? Like, 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 if we go, if we go back to the picture, stay with me, Brad. Don't go to the picture. Stay with me. If we go back to the picture, the plant's flourishing. This is supposed to be our life. We're not supposed to be a, 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 a pile of sticks. We're not supposed to be a pile of sticks at all. We're not supposed to live this unfruitful, dead life. You, you, you see what I mean? And so, and so we think because we have these flesh parties that this is life, that this is the good part of living, right? That I'm enjoying myself. But, but at the same time, on the flip side, I'm living a life that is opposing to God. And so because I'm living a life that is opposing to God, check this out. And men gather them and cast them into the fire and they are burned. Now, this is an end time scripture. But if we just use this as an everyday thing and men gather them, why do you think people are using you? Why do you think people are getting over on you? Why do you think that the world is just doing whatever to us because we put ourselves in compromising positions based on, on, on the thing of we just not abiding in, in this way of God's life. He said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. If you want the way, if you want the truth, and you want the life, this is the way you live, right? But, 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 but we expose ourselves to outside influences just because we won't stay within the parameters of God and live the way we're supposed to live. If we stay in the parameters of God and live the way we're supposed to live, we'll, we'll, we'll accomplish way more. There are some surprising things that are, that are waiting for you to come to the revelation. There are some things about you that you haven't been introduced to yet because you don't know this relationship with God well enough. There, l listen, listen, man, listen. After, after 2004 is when we started going to church. 2004 to 2024, 20 years. Man, God just keeps peeling back layers of who Jamal is, right? Like, 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 there are some things that I've that I've experienced in God and said to myself, "My God, I didn't know this was in me." You see, because what you have to realize is that when you get saved, all the gifts, all your talents, right, are enhanced. One, one, and two. There's some things lying dormant in you that you don't even know yet. That you haven't, there's, there's parts of you that you haven't even been introduced to yet, right? L listen, listen, I was a cheater and a dog. I got married, dirty. <laughs> when I didn't think I had the capability of being faithful. I didn't. And, and, and. It wasn't because I loved her. It was because I loved him. Does this make sense? Like, like because I feel like in the last eight, five to eight years, I love her more, but I had to learn how to love her more. Those first 12 years, of our marriage, right, was I love her the same, but I love God more. The love of God, right, should restrain you, right? And so because I love God more, right, because the ideas of cheating could have still went through my mind and they weren't cast down. They were played upon, knowing that I'm not going to do it because I love God. Now, in the last decade, right, when those same ideas come up, come, come up, they're cast down, not because I love God, because I've learned to love her now through God. Does this make sense? Right? So, so leave, take God out of the equation. I love her. I loved her when I met her. I loved her the whole time. But you take God out of the equation, I don't know how to control myself, right? Because I'm still in this body. 
And so because I'm still in this body and the body has an appetite, right? And so because the body has an appetite, I'm not man enough alone. Trust me. I'm not man enough alone without his will in my life to be able to honor her the way she's supposed to be honored. I just, I, it, right? So if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done, un, it shall be done unto you. Okay, Lord, make me honorable. Make me a good father. Make me a good husband. Make me these things, Lord. Teach me how. I'm going to tell you, how, I'm gonna tell you how, how that's such a powerful statement. Lord, show me. Lord, teach me how. Check this out. Simple. I needed my toenail clipper. This is just so simple. I looked for this toenail clipper for 14 days. It could only be in two places. I got a drawer in my office, and I got a drawer in my bedroom, right? The drawer in my office got mad stuff in it. The drawer in my bedroom has barely nothing in it, right? I rumble around in this, in the, and my toenails is getting long. They starting to bother me, right? I need to clip them, right? I'm just, I'm, so I'm sitting, I'm putting my socks on in my office the other day, and I said, Lord, I know you know where it's at, right? I don't want to go buy another one, right? Show me where it's at. I leave out and go to work. I come home. She's laying in the bed. I go back to the drawer, open the drawer. I lift up one piece of paper. Now, I didn't move everything in this drawer for two weeks. I moved one piece of paper. I said, babe, look, right? L listen, abide in me and my words abide in you. Now, now, this is simple. It's just a toenail clipper, right? But, but, but this is not the first time, is it, Brad? This is not the first time that I've been looking for something, I've, I've needed something, and I just said, wait a minute. Why didn't I just ask God, right? Like, like ask me how has become a part of me. Like, he, he, he said to me, you haven't asked me. Like, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, you shall ask what you will and it shall be done unto you. Herein is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit, so you shall be my disciples. That you bear much fruit, that you shall be, as the Father have loved me, so have I loved you. Continue in my love. So, so to continue in my love means that I continue in him, right? Means that I continue in his word that, that makes me his disciple, right? We're we going to go into this later, but, but, but what I'm getting at is we spend more time on our own will and our own talents and the way we do things instead of just stopping and saying, wait a minute, I'm in Christ. I'm in Christ for a reason. How, do, how am I supposed to function? Right. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So if this means apart from me that I, I can do nothing, then that means that if I get if, if, if every minute and minuscule event in my life, I start saying, wait a minute, God, how do I do this? Or the word says, do it this way. Right. If I'm not directly asking God, where's my toenail clipper? Right. But I'm also asking and I'm not saying should I put on the red shirt or the pink shirt or, or what? I'm not saying that. What I'm saying is, should, should I buy this now? And I'm not talking about a, 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 about a water. I'm talking about purchases. Like, like, should I make this move now? Is this how I'm supposed to function? When somebody opposes me, is there enough word in me? When somebody comes at me, is there enough word in me that I respond according to the word or am I responding according to my flesh, right? Is the answer in me or is the answer in God? Like, these are the things I'm trying to get at, at you. Like, 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 apart from me, you can do nothing. And so I'm not talking about, like, everyday life choices, like going to work. Should I work here? Should I? Listen, you're going to find out whether you should work there or not on, on your own, right? right? But, but should I leave here to go there? Because this is what we do. This is what we do. God bless me with X, Y, and Z. Right? God bless me with a new car. 18 months later, I can't stand this car. It keeps breaking. I thought God gave it to you. Right? Because every good thing, right, every good thing we like to attribute to God, and sometimes God ain't got nothing in it. That was your decision. Because, because God may have told you, keep your little bit of money and buy that lesser car. But because your eyes was big, you bought the other car and said, look with the Lord. And then you like to attribute it to God because you, you, you super spiritual. <laughs> you like that one, huh? Right? Listen, man, this, this, this thing is very simple. If 
For man abide not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, right? The imagery in this verse, the imagery in this verse is rich with theological and spiritual significance, right? Drawing the agricultural metaphors to convey deep truths about the believer's relationship with Christ and the consequences of not maintaining that relationship. So what is this saying? It's saying that the onus is on who? Huh? On us, right? The onus is on us. There's consequences. Like, like, like think about this. Think about this. God comes, he steps into a room, and he says, anyone who wants me can have me. The only thing is when you leave, you got to do what I say. Can you handle that? Huh? Right? I was talking about this picture. Me and Teresa was talking about how, how I, I go like this all the day. And I said, I, this morning I was talking about, I, said, I saw this picture of my father training this, this, this young boy, right, in baseball. And he had his finger up like this at his face, right? And I can imagine what he was saying. I told you, and if you do it this way, right, th this is God, right? This, this, is, this, is, this is what we do. This is how we give information to other people. I told you, if you do it this way, this is the outcome. Why? Because we have experience in that thing, right? We have a know-how. When the person leaves you, where's the responsibility lie? The information is given. Where's the responsibility lie? The responsibility lies on the person that now has to go perform what has been given to them, right? L listen, this de convey deep truths about the believer's relationship with Christ and the consequences of not maintaining that relationship. Christ is saying, listen, there's a reward. There's a recompense of reward for not living the right way. There's a recompense. There's something that comes along with not doing what I said to do, right? And so, and so knowing that we have this, it still sometimes is very hard to maintain this relationship because it feels like every dot and every I, like have you ever wrote, wrote anything and then had to go back, you go back and read it and be like, oh my God, that, that was there? I gotta change this word. I did it this morning, right? Because we don't proofread, right? We say what we have to say and we let it go, right? But, well, God wants us to proofread our life. Like, 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 and because we don't proofread and because we're not meticulous about our walk and because, we're, because we, I'm just living, right? We find ourselves in circumstances and situations that are sometimes detrimental because we're not maintaining. Like, like, like think about this. Think about this. Have you ever worked out, right? And, and you, you, ever, you ever did like where, where, you, where you, you, know, you, you come down slow? Right? Like I'm shaking already thinking about it. You see that arm shaking? I'm, I'm shaking already. Like, 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 like to maintain the weight, right? To balance, to balance a Christ-like life. To balance a Christ-like life takes effort. It's going to take resolve. It's going to take fortitude, right? It's going to take all these things. It's going to take him being forged in you, right? It's going to take some time in his word. It's going to take some things to make sure that I live this optimal life. Who's the beneficiary of it? You and everything around you, right? The, check this out. Her life, her life would be her life regardless, but her life is better because I'm tied to God, right? My grandchildren's life is better because I'm tied to God, right? My, my kids' life are better because I'm tied to God. Right? And, and, so, and so if I'm not tied to God being the head of their life, where am I? Where am I? I don't know. I don't know. By now I might be here, but she might not be. Right? I, I, told her, I told her, was it this morning? I'll just find another one just like you. She said, will she be? Right? The broader context of John 15 involves Jesus describing himself as the true vine, his followers as the branches. This metaphor highlights the organic and vital connection between Christ and his believers. Check this out. Jesus, the vine represents Jesus, the source of life and nourishment, the source of life and nourishment. As a believer, he is the source of life and nourishment. Do you feed on him? Right? Do you feed on him? Like, 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 like when I, hey, Samaria, when I see you, I'm encouraged, right? Like you live this thing out loud. You think you live this thing out really far out loud, right? And so and so it encouraged. How old are you? 
Oh, you that old? I thought you was like 20, 25, 20. You just, you got, you, you, it's, it's, the, it's that Jesus glow. <laughs> See, I, ba- I, I, I baited you into that. I baited you into that. I walked you right into that. <laughs> No, but for real, I'm encouraged by your life because, because you have this understanding that, that I have to have. You, you know, you shared, you shared a, a picture, a post, or a reel or something of a relationship, and you said this in, in the post. You said, I want that, but only if you send it to me, God. I'll wait, right? Like, like, like to have that mindset at 31 years old, right? And, and then a couple months ago, you went on a Jesus date. You went by yourself. You went out to eat. She was trolling around like somebody was walking with her, right? I watched you. I'll be, I'll, listen, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a Facebook stalker. I just want you to know that, right? I am. Right? See, this is how you stay connected. Branches represent believers who derive their life and ability to bear fruit from the vine. Like, 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 like how important is it to sacrifice, this is what she, to sacrifice yourself so you can have an optimal relationship with God. Like, like, like this, is, this is what I'm getting at. Like, there, there, there are things as, as a man that, 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 as a husband that I want to do, but there are sacrifices that I've made because of God. Like, 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 like you said you wanted to send us to brunch. Do you know how long it's been since we've enjoyed a Sunday together? Because my Sunday's occupied. I've been enlisted by God to do a certain thing. And so because of that, my Sundays are occupied, right? So, so as, as for y'all, you can take whatever Sunday off you want, right? But for me, I can't. I can't take that week off or those two weeks off or three weeks off because if it wasn't for him, there's nobody to fill in this spot. And if he goes, I can't go, right? And, but, but then there's also this burden, this compelling burden to be here, right? And so, and so this represents the believer who derives their life and ability to bear fruit from the vine. I have to be here for you. I'm your pastor. And so because I'm your pastor, it's, it's vitally important that I fulfill what God has called me to do, and that's be here on the shelf waiting for you to get here. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. From a human point of view, this is the worst thing for me. I hate feeling used. And so, and so, and so check this out. When I feel like you're using me, and I still have to be here for you, I, I, Listen, when you sit here, I feel more and more like you every day. Right? I didn't know where I got all this stuff from, but now I know. Right? So, so, so abide. To continue in a certain state, condition, or activity. To continue, even when you don't want to. Continue when it's not, when it's not personally beneficial. To continue, because remember we said last week that this word abide was temporal, pertaining to this life or this world or the body only, secular, temporal concerns, temporal affairs, in a sense it is opposed to spiritual. This has nothing to do with a spiritual mindset. This means that I keep my body in subjection to Christ. And so because I keep my body in subjection to Christ, this means that there's things that I want to do that I can't do, right? And so because I can't do them, right, what, what, what am I left with? I'm left with a sacrifice. I'm left with a void. I saw a post the other day that said, true worship comes with a real sacrifice. If there is no sacrifice, there what, it's not worship. And, 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 and I, I, I kind of oppose that, right? I oppose that mentally and, and, and because I've never found that in the word. But it does make sense, right? It does make sense because what we've equated to worship is music. But what real worship is, is life. It goes so much past the music. It goes into every in- uncomfortable place in your life. It goes into every aspect of who you are, right? And so, and so because of that, and so because of that, it's like, I, This is, this, is, this, is, this is worship, to confine yourself into who he is, parameters, abide in me. 
Me saying I'm abiding in you, saying that I'm going to worship you with my life. Yeah, it's just the emotional part. I told you it does. <laughs> Verse 6 says that, that, that Jesus emphasizes those who don't abide are thrown away. Listen, listen, have, have you ever had, I, I don't know, have you ever had a time period? I, I haven't experienced this. Well, no, that's not true. I had 19 months of not really going to church every week when we moved, right? So I did experience it. It was the worst time I've experienced in my walk with Christ. Matter of fact, I was depressed. I sat in dark rooms and cried. Like, like do, you, do you know what it's like to have this really strong relationship with God and then move out of the will of God and not experience it? Like, 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 like it was tough. I, it, it just come back to me, right? That, that, that and, and this is what she would do. She'd come, I'm sitting in this dark room, and, and she'd say, hey, when's the last time you read? You know, my response was, I don't want to read. So, so I, I'd pull the, my, my, my Bible software up. She'd leave the office. I'd pull my Bible software up, and I'd just look at the screen. I couldn't connect. I couldn't connect back to God, right? I was upset. He wasn't doing what I wanted him to do. He wasn't functioning the way I expect him to function for me. Remember last week I was talking about the jack-in-the-box? I, I, I put him in my little jack-in-the-box, and I wanted to pop him out the way I wanted to pop him out, and he needed to do what I wanted him to do. And so because of that, here I am with my thumb in my mouth, right, crying because, because, because I'm withering. I'm withering. Have you ever experienced that? Have you ever got to the point, right, to where you wasn't doing it his way, and so because you wasn't doing it his way, all these other things were entering in and was choking the life that God had given you, right? Mark, Mark chapter 4 says that, that when we lust for other things, these things enter in and choke the word of God, right? And, and, and the very thing that's supposed to produce something out of our life and become profitable is no longer profitable because we've allowed all this other stuff in the way. Right? This imagery is that of a withered branches, branches that have fallen off and branches that are purposely cut off. Like, thank God that we are saved and that the grace of God keeps us connected, that we can always get back into the flow of things, right? But think about, think about if, you, if you go too long. Think about if you go too long. If one year goes by, and two years goes by, and three years go by, you start hearing the word, right? Somebody comes along and says, uh, uh, are you saved? Yes, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven, and, and life don't look like it at all. Life doesn't look like you're a Christian at all. Question. Let's pause here for a second. Question. What is your life supposed to be as a Christian? Fruitful. Fruitful. What else? What are you supposed to do with it? Bring more disciples. Make more disciples. Bring more disciples. Bring people to Christ. Mm -hmm. If you're living one way, right, are you effective? Because you're Opposite. No. Right? Where is the power in your testimony? In your, life. In your walk. See, see, to know you're secure is selfish. To know you're secure and, 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 and to take advantage of the grace of God is very selfish, right? But to sacrifice yourself for someone else is just like God. Jesus said it this way. There is no greater love than a man that will lay his life down for another. So when you choose 
to lay your life down, what you really want to do, have a gangster party, right? When you lay that life down for someone else, for the stranger that might come across you, right? For the person that's connected to you. You've changed. Yeah, I have. You don't do X, Y, and Z. No, I don't. See, see, this is this is this is the walk. Right? And so when so when we live a certain kind of way that opposes God, but still understand that our salvation is secure. And then we live a certain way out in front of other people that opposes God. Let, let me keep making it right, make it clear. It's very selfish. And it brings in the question, do I really believe in Jesus Christ? Right? Do I really believe? Right? Because check this out. Failure to abide. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. Not abiding refers to failing to maintain a living active relationship with Christ, this can involve the lack of faith, disobedience, and rejection of his teachings. So, so let me ask you a question. If, 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 if I lack faith, will I be disobedient? If I lack faith, will I internally reject him? We might not, listen, we might not verbally reject him, but we may reject him in, his, in our heart, right? Now, 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 when I say lack faith, I'm not talking about do I believe whether he exists or not, right? Because there's a difference between believing that he exists and knowing that he exists, right? Because look at this. Faith is the steward of obedience. If I believe correctly, right, because what is faith? Acting on the word of God, right? And so if I believe correctly, faith is the steward of obedience and the acceptance of Christ's teachings. So if I really believe in Jesus... I'm going to have struggles with sin. Not that I'm not going to sin. Not that I'm not going to fall sometimes. But I'm going to struggle. It's not going to be, <laughs> let's do it again. Let's do it again. I'm not going to be happy about it. Right? I'm going to fall. I'm going to fall. But I'm not going to be happy about it. And so because I'm not happy about it, because, because there's this opposing thing in me, which is called faith, that is stewarding my obedience. Right? Faith is telling me, no, this is not how you live. Body's saying, listen, faith, be quiet for a second. There's something I want to do, right? Faith is saying, no, and you're struggling. Which way do I go? Which way do I go, right? If we lack faith, we will most definitely abide in disobedience. Listen, I'm not talking about stepping in obedience. I'm talking about abiding in disobedience. You see what I'm saying? And so, and so when one year and two years and three years and four years and five years start presenting yourself and you say, wait a minute, I'm a Christian. Why am I living this way? The reason why is, is because somewhere your faith is skewed. You think that it's just believing in God, right? When, it, when, when check this out, faith is the substance of things hoped for. Substance in the Greek is this word called hypostasis. Hypostasis means that it, uh, it upholds. So this tells me that if faith is the substance of things hoped for, what am I hoping for? An eternal life with God. And so, and so if that's the case, this substance, right, faith is the substance of my hope, that means that it's upholding, right, my life. So if faith is the steward of obedience and the acceptance of Christ's teachings, if we lack faith, we will most definitely abide on disobedience. When I'm standing in, in disobedience and it becomes not just sin but iniquity, now lifestyle is built around it, I have to now question myself and say, wait a minute. Where is my faith off? Where am I off? Right? Because this is what we like to do. God, why would you do this to me? Why did you allow this, God? God didn't do anything. He's the same place he was when you left him. Right? And so, and so if we lack faith, we will most definitely abide in disobedience and internally reject Christ. Right? Our mouth are verbally saying, I'm a Christian, I believe in Jesus, because what's the alternative? Woo! It's hot in here. <laughs> it's going to be real hot for some. Right? And so, and so, it's like, how, how, how do I 
maintain this walk in 2024? How do I maintain an optimal walk with God in 2024? How do I get to a place where I'm not building a life outside of Christ? Sacrifice. Constantly focused. The way they've always done it. In his word. This has to become your actual guide of life. If you can't, if, if, listen, if you, you need to read it enough to where you can oh, check yourself with it. Right. Bring all things to remembrance. Right. Because, 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 because this internally rejecting Christ. This, listen, we do it moment by moment, right? Like hopscotch. We jump out, we jump back in. We jump out, we jump back in. We jump out, we jump back in. Thank God we can jump back in. Because there's some people that just are out and will never know God. And see, and see this is why The church lacks honor in this place. We take advantage of this grace that has been given to us, right? We take, we take real strong advantage and we lack honor in this one place that I got access to come back. You, you, you know what I mean? Like we get real disgruntled. Like I was disgruntled in those 19 months. Uh, reading is how I meet God. This is how I pray. I, I read the word and I allow the word to, to, to speak to me, right? And then I speak back to him based on the word. My, my worship time is not with music. My worship time's in the word. She's coming to me saying, when's the last time you read? You read. I don't want to. And God's door is still open. I'm rejecting him. I don't want nothing to do with you. She comes back. But you've always said this is how you meet God. Babe, you need God right now. Well, I don't want him. Whew. Pastor saying this. After preaching for 10 years, right? After preaching for longer than 10 years. Hey, babe, I'm preaching right now. Did you just... <laughs> Pastor. Yes. Right. I've been on that. Like, I'm like, Lord. Come on. So now, when you brought up, we, we talked about the Romans about the living, it's the living sacrifice mm -hmm. that we present. Like, that is the sacrifice. And then, as I hear, it's like, it's the obedience. I was like, how do you maintain it? That's what your question was. I'm like, yeah, Lord, how do you maintain it? I'm asking myself, well, asking the Holy Spirit to, to, to show. And you literally said obedience. And I've been on, like, like, it's like when you leave the option of obedience not being the only option. Say that again. That's good. That's <laughs> good. Say it again. Obedience as being the only option. It's, it, it's, it's leaving it as the only option. Now I now can only worship God in spirit and truth. Because it's really about what spirit are you going to choose to take on? Because we have the body. Who's going to worship? So this choice is either a Holy Spirit choice, which can only be holy. Because they ain't going to mix. So what's the second option? And that's where I'm like, but to be able to worship him and not, I'm tired of, you know, having to repent. But at the end of the day, use that grace to be like, I can go back for more as in, how do we write the vision clear? And I'm sitting here happy Last I have the grace. Last Sunday, you left church, went up to the school with her Bible open with her dog sitting by the court while they were playing basketball. She had just went to two church services. One before this one and this one. See, I'm telling you, like, 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 she keeps herself busy with God. Like you, if I don't, I'm in the left field. I don't know. So check this out. She says, so I asked, did they stumble in order that they might fall? Right? Now, this is talking about the Jews that, that don't believe in Christ. Right? He says, so I asked, did they stumble in order that they might fall? By no means. 
Rather, through their trespass, salvation has come to the Gentiles. We get access because they denied him. They rejected him. We're talking about this rejection, right? And we're talking about this faith. Watch this. He says, so as to make Israel jealous, right? Rather, through their trespass, salvation has come to the Gentiles so as to make Israel jealous. Now, if their trespass means riches for the world, and if their failure means riches for the Gentiles, how much more will their full inclusion mean? So what he's saying is, these Jews who never will be, never have believed in Christ, they're cut off. We have Messianic Jews. Messianic Jews are, are people that are of Jewish descent, but they believe in Jesus Christ. They're Messianic Jews. But there's a whole, the majority of them don't believe Jesus has come yet. And so because of that, Paul is saying they're cut off, right? They're cut off because they don't believe, right? He said, now, if their trespass means riches for the world, which is Christ, and if their failure means riches for the Gentiles, which is Christ, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, right? said, so how much more will their full inclusion mean? Check this out. Now, I'm speaking to you Gentiles, and as much then as I am an apostle to the Gentiles, I magnify my ministry in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous. Paul's saying, listen, I ain't even going to preach to them no more. I'm only going to preach to y'all just to make them jealous, right? He said, in order somehow to make my fellow Jews jealous and thus save some of them, right? Make them inquire, right? For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, like Jesus said, I came to my own, my own received me not, so I turned to these other people, right? He said, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? He said, they have access. Check this out. The reason why they have access is because they never have tasted. They've only denied, right? Listen, you can't taste God and then deny him. You can't. Hebrews 6, go read it. Hebrews 6 t clearly tells us, you can't come here and then reject me and think that you got access back, right? So, so check this out. For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what would their acceptance mean but life from the dead? If the dough offered as first fruits is holy, so is the whole lump. And if the root is holy, so are the branches. We're talking about the Jew, right? Look at this. But if some of the branches were broken off and you, although a wild olive shoot, were grafted in among the others and now sharing the nourishing root of the olive tree, us, wild, we were not Jews, but now have access. And so you have Caught, I had to go look this up. I said, why, why wild olive shoots, right? There, there, were, olives, there were olive trees that were, were, were cultivated, like they, they were made this way. And then there were ones that were just naturally growing up wild, right? And so he's saying, we were branches on this tree that were cut off and put into the, the life of Christ. We were, we were grafted in. You know what I'm talking about, right? You take one plant, you tie it into another plant till it gets its life. Once it gets its life, you can take it out and put it in the dirt and it becomes its own thing, right? He says, but if some of the branches were broken off and you, although a wild olive shoot, were grafted in among the others, now sharing the nourishing root of the olive trees, don't be arrogant towards the branches. See, see a lot of times, a lot of times, this is where we are as Christians, we get real high-minded of those who are not of God, those who are on the outside of God, right? This is not how we're supposed to act. We're not supposed to act high-minded. We're supposed to be able to attract people. This is what Paul said, right? He said, I turn my back to my fellows, right, to live this life in front of these Gentiles, to show them what they're missing, right? There's a life that we're supposed to live, a vibrant life that we're supposed to live, right? This is how we make disciples, that we enjoy Christ. Because when we enjoy Christ, we now make our life attractive, right? But a lot of times, right, we enjoy Christ, but then we look down and, and, and put our nose in the air at other people, right? And so, and so don't be arrogant toward the branches. If you are, remember, it is not you who support the root, but the root that supports you. The life that you have is not yours. It's Christ. The reason why it's so good is because he's good, because God is good, right? And so when you take advantage of the life that you have with Christ, your life becomes vi vital, like, like the vitality in life. The, the love that you experience, the joy that you experience, right? The peace that you experience, all these things that you experience is because it's not because of you, it's because of him, right? And so, and so when you live this way in front of other people, it makes it attractive, right? Because, because check this out, they don't want that life until trouble comes. Because once trouble comes, what happens? Uh, uh, hey, yo, cool. Um, 
Yo, can I talk to you for a second? What's up? Uh, I need you to pray for me, man. I, I remember one time I, w I was working with uh, this guy that he was Catholic, right? And he, and he came to me, he said, um, he said, your mom, your, your mom um, Spanish guy, he said, your mom, let me, let me ask you a question, man. Can you pray for me? I said, well, you believe in God too? He said, yeah, well, I, I pray to all the little, the little guys. It seems like the big guy listens to you more. Can you pray for me? Because they pray to saints, right? Catholics pray to saints. I said, but you could pray. He said, no, nah, man, he, he don't, he doesn't. He said, he said, he doesn't listen to me. I said, because he doesn't listen to you because you pray to everything else but him. I said, but I'll pray for you. Come on, let's pray. Like, like, like people should want to desire what you have. People should want to desire the life that you have with God. I have no greater position than anyone else. My position with God is no greater than yours. But, but, but what, what I'm getting at is, is there's just something that's, that's lived out in front of other people that people say, wait a minute, I want to taste that too. Taste the Lord and see that he is good. There's something that I want out of this too. There's a way that we live. Look, look at this. Based on this passage and the context around it, here are several reasons why it is important for Christians not to boast about their placement within the body of Christ. Grace and merit, right? Like, the inclusion of Gentile believers into the family of God is entirely an act of grace. You didn't get here on your own. God saved you because he loved you, right? Not based on their own merit. Boasting implies that, that somehow you earned their place, with contradic which contradicts the fundamental Christian doctrine of salvation. Look at this. For by what? Grace you have been saved through faith, right? How did you get faith? How did you get faith? Did you, do you think you believe on your own? He gave it to us. You see what I'm saying? He gave it to us, right? And this is not your own doing. It's the gift of God, not a result of works so that one of you may boast. Look at this one. The unity of believers. Boasting about one's placement within the body of Christ can create division and a sense of superiority, right, among believers. Look at 1 Corinthians. For the body does not consist of one member but of many. If the foot shall say, because I am not a hand, do I not belong in the body, right? L -l Listen, Christ needs all of us. There's something that, listen, if I said earlier there's something in you that you haven't experienced yet, there's something in you that the body of Christ needs. And so because you won't pull it out, we don't get to experience it. Because you won't have this deep walk with God, we don't get to experience it. Like, like, like I sit back and enjoy this young lady's life. I sit back, I might not like everything, or I might not comment, but I sit back and like it. And then there's other Christians that I see where I just be like, man, is that from Facebook? You, you see what I'm saying? Like, 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 I thought we were Christians. Like, like you can live your life, do what you do. But, it, but if, you, if you bear the name of Christ, then what should you be exhibiting? That, that, that bothers me, right? Because we all, have, we all have an appetite. We all have things that we do outside of God. But is it really for the world to see, right? And if the ear should say, because I'm not an eye, do I not belong in the body? Blah, blah, blah. Let's, let's skip. Listen. But as God, as it is, God arranged the members of the body, each of them as he chose. If all were a single member, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, yet one body. Look at this. The eye cannot say to the hand, I have no need of you, nor again the head, the feet. Right? On contrary, the parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. That's a lie, right? And those parts of the body that we think less honorable, we bestow the greater honor, and our un unpresentable parts are treated with greater modesty, which our most presentable parts do not require. But God has so composed the body, giving greater honor to the part that lacked it. Listen, what that means is, is that I should be taking care of the parts that are struggling, right? L listen, when you cut yourself, what do you do with it? L listen, listen, I, I hit my ankle the other day on something. I had a piece of skin that's been hanging for a couple days, right? And I went to pull it off the first day, and it was too tender. I couldn't get it. So I had to sleep with that, right? And so every time I would lay on it, it was causing me pain, right? And so I would go, uh, the next day when I woke up, I went back to it to try to pull the skin off. It was still too tender. But, I, but, 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 but it was letting me know it's weak, right? And so once, it got, once the skin got hard again, 
I was able to go get it and pull it off, and now the healing process worked. Right? There, there are some things that are in the body of Christ that we need to tend to, but we don't tend to these things because, because we don't want to be discomforted. Does this make sense? Like, 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 like there, there are some things that, that are ailing, and we just can't cut them off because they're a problem. We just can't, we just can't cut off people because they're a problem. And as pastor, as pastor, check this out. This is what I heard my pastor say today. Sometimes love doesn't sound like love. He said, he said, how do you tell a person that they need to lose weight and it sounds like love? Right? Now, now, I'm a big boy. Right? I need to lose weight. I know it. Do you need to tell me about it? I think that, like, yes, you do. With our, I, mean, I think that it's even so with like, your walk. Like, even if you're not saying nothing, maybe you're inspired by someone that posts this content. But you don't have to say it, but it's just like you see them working out like, dang, I see some things change for you. No, but hold on. I'm going somewhere. I'm going somewhere. Check this out. But when I say something that's offensive to you because of a behavior you have, what do we say? Don't judge me. Right? This is what we say. Don't judge me. Well, well, well check this out. A couple weeks ago, I put up a post about homosexuality. There was over 300 comments. They was coming from my neck, telling me I was judging them. The book judged them already. The book judged them already, right? I don't need to judge you. But, but if someone doesn't say anything, what's the alternative? Because the book says that no infeminate will inherit the earth. So what, so what is love? For me to let you go to hell without ministering to you? Or me complying because I have a personal relationship with you. Come on. Also, but there may be also an additional way where if someone depending on the relationship with you may not be able to receive from you what can receive from 300 comments, these people don't have a relationship no, with me. I'm, that's your point. <laughs> So you didn't want them to tell you? Not that I didn't want them to tell me. Like you said, you are new. I already knew. But I guess just the, the factual coming from my doctor, coming from someone else. So you'd rather have a clinical diagnosis than someone who really loves you to tell you, hey, you need to take care of yourself. I'm saying it can come from another source. No, but hold on. I'm just asking you a question. It it's can come bad. from a source. It's not bad. No, but we're talking about love here. We're not talking about a clinical diagnosis of what makes you comfortable. No, I know, I know that, but we're talking about love, yeah. right? But, but hold on, hold on, y'all. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, before we go too far. Huh? How do you love? Right, how do you love someone in that kind of, in a, in a very uncomfortable position? No, you're right. You tell them, and people who love me told me. However. You couldn't receive it. And that's what I'm saying. And because, and they, and, and they weren't like pounding me every day, making me feel insecure, making me feel bad. Go to the doctors. That was my mother said. Go to the doctor. Because your mother understands you. You need right. you needed you needed science to determine what someone who loved you already told you. But the person that loved me knew that about me. That's how she loved me. Right. So instead of it's what you're saying, how do you love me? Right, but but hold on. But this is what I'm getting at. This is good. Because this is what I'm getting at. We get offended by authentic love sometimes. Because the doctor don't love you. There's, hold on, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. We, we, we done with you right now. This is not back and forth. What I'm getting at is, what, what I'm getting at is, we get offended by authentic love sometimes. And so because we get offended by authentic love, right, we rather, we rather get it from someone who doesn't love us, right? We rather get it because, it, because of the comfort level. This is not you. We're not talking about you. Whatever I said made you speak. There wasn't, a, there wasn't a conversation that started between me and you, right? So, so, so what I'm getting at is, check, 
check this out. I don't even know how I got down this rabbit hole. So you were talking about love and people who you were talking about the authentic love and you were talking about your post. Right. So, so as a pastor, when, when God says, I'll, I'll give you pastors after my own heart, some of the things that we say sounds real tough and rough. This is what, that's where I was going at. And there's some things that I may say that offend you or you think I'm only talking about you and I'm not only talking about you, right? But because the shoe fits and you're wearing it, you think that I'm only talking about you when I'm not. The fact of the matter that if I don't say it because you are present or you are in earshot or you are in eye shot of what I have to say, does it mean that if I hold back what I need to say because I love you or do I hold back what I want to say because you need to be comfortable? Right. And that's not not telling them the truth of what God said, not what you say, but what God said is not exhibiting true authentic love. So 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 in that post, back to the post, I was arrogant, I was mean. That can I say what you said? That wasn't in the spirit of God, right? It was. It was. It's the truth. It's the truth. And, and I can't oppose what you're doing because I love you. The, but, but, but we have family members. I mean, like, we, we do. exposed to all kinds of everything, even the lifestyle of homosexuality. Do we love those people? Absolutely. But, they, but do we uh, co-sign or, or um, promote or whatever their life? No. But even they know that we 100% love them. It, it's, it's what you're doing is what isn't of God. Right. But how can you win somebody over to live a lifestyle, for, live a life for Christ, if you don't love them through? Like, you can't just throw somebody away or hate them or cut them off because of whatever their issue is. The best way to get somebody to change their life is by continuing to love them and be truthful with them. Yes. It can. It can. I'm looking at it right now. I'm looking for it right now. I got it, babe. Can I finish? Jeez. In the book of Luke, in the book of Luke, in the book of Luke, it said this. Jesus said, do you think I've come to bring peace, not at all, but rather division. And then it goes on to say, father and bro son will be separated, mother and father, I mean, you know, daughter, mother-in-law and, and daughter-in-law separation, right? And what my pastor was preaching was, there are two families on the earth, one of Satan, you are of your father the devil, and one of God. That's the only two families. He's been talking about basically what I, what I talked to y'all about a couple weeks ago, that the uh, blood of the covenant is thicker than the water of the womb, right? And so, and so what I'm getting at is, like, there's a side. And just because there's blood connected or friendship or camaraderie or whatever it is, when, when, when I know you outside of God and I'm on the inside of God, like, I got a lot of friends that I love with all my heart, but, but they don't even believe in Christ. They're going to hell, and I tell them, bro, are you, based on what I read, you're going to hell. Yeah, because, well, I'll find out when I get there. Okay. I've been doing this long enough that they already know. I don't need to give them a whole discourse. That's enough. 
Based on what I believe in, you going to hell. Well, I don't believe he exists. Okay. We're going to enjoy each other now. You hungry? Let's go eat. We can enjoy each other now because we won't enjoy each other later. And like, this is the truth of the word. You see what I'm saying? So, so for us who are abiding in God, do we take advantage of this abiding? No, we do. We take full advantage of it. We take full advantage of it and get all the benefits, right? Like, 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 like this, is, this is the house of God. Like, I live in Christ, and I got full access to his mind, his heart, his hand. I got full access to all of it. I want his knowledge. I want his love. I want what he can provide for me. I want it all. I want everything. I, and, and, and the only way to get it is be the, the uh, uh, brown noser. I'm... I'm, I'm I'm bringing apples to the teacher. I'm doing everything, right? We take full advantage of this opportunity we have in this life because when we take full advantage of it, we get all the benefits. Amen? Come on, give God praise.